So let's start. So the first value is uh, scalar vector. This is vector, this is scalar, and this is scalar as well. Now, uh, the first thing you check is that it's a horizontal velocity. So you have ux to be this and uh, ui to be zero. Now going ahead, it says lands on this, calculate the time taken, fine. So for horizontal, we use SVT only. So displacement is 0 0.43 and velocity is 1.1 meters per second and time is what we need. So V is equal to displacement over time. Okay, so time would be 0 0.43 divided by 1.1. Raise my calculator. Three point four three divided by one point one. That is uh, zero point three nine seconds. Okay. Then it says use your answer uh, to determine the height of the table. Okay, because we are talking about vertical, so we use S U V A T. The displacement is we don't know. Initial velocity is zero. Final we don't know. Acceleration is 9.81 because it is falling down and it is also falling down. So we use positive and the time would be the same that we got in the first part. So the best equation would be S equals to half UT plus AT squared. Okay, UT plus half to AT squared. So this is what we need. That's the height. That's zero. It's half 9.81, 0 0.39 whole squared. So, uh, 0 0.39 square. Okay, so I'm getting it to be 0 0.75 meters, which is great. Okay, now, then it says the ball leaves the table at time zero for the motion of the ball between A and B sketch the graph show variation. Show the variation with time T of acceleration of the ball and vertical component, vertical, uh, displacement. Okay, I think that's fine. So, because acceleration is just constant, so we have to use uh, like this. And if you like, you can also write 9.81 here. It's not required, but you can. Anyway, as far as displacement is concerned, because it is increasing velocity graph, so your graph should look like this increasing velocity because there's acceleration, right? Velocity has to increase, so you should um, basically have that gradient. Now, uh, a ball of greater mass is projected from the table with same velocity. Uh, it is in state, what is uh, state and explain the effect of increased mass? Uh, there is no effect. No effect as acceleration due to gravity is independent of mass, right? Now, um, then going to the second um, part. Sir? Yes. Could you just say that gravity, uh, the acceleration is constant? Uh, yes, you can say that. But you have to uh, basically connect them that they will have, I mean, it won't have any effect because right. both will have the same acceleration no matter what, okay? Right. So then going to this question, uh, for work then you just write force times displacement moved in the direction of force. So that's something. And then this one, okay. Now, uh, 580 kg, uh, 13, okay. There's no other, okay, so 22 and 12, right, fine. So at Y it is 12, decreases to 12, okay. So for Y to show the decrease in kinetic energy, so that's fine. Kinetic energy initial would be half times 580 times uh, 22 whole square and kinetic energy final 
would be half times 580 times uh, 12 whole square. So that is 140360. And this is 0 0.5 times 580 times 12 square, 41760. Now we subtract them. So this will be 140360 minus 41760. So nine eight six hundred. So if I were you, uh, this is equivalent to nine four nine times ten raised to the power four root. Okay. By the way, do not forget to write the units. That's joules. It's very important. Now calculate the gain in gravitational potential energy. Now uh, we need to see if there was a uh, friction. Did they say it was uh, there was friction? They didn't say anything. They didn't even say that there is friction. There's not, there's no friction. So I'm going to assume that there is friction, okay? So, well, it goes a height of 13. So I would use MGH 580, 9.81 and 13. That is, 73967.4, so 7.4 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 10 raised to power 4 joules. So this means there was friction because uh, you can see the kinetic energy has a different value, the change. So now he's going to ask us about uh, probably friction, I think. Show that the length of track is 20. Okay. So the track is basically a quarter circle, 13 here, 13 here, and we want to find this length. Uh, the best way is to uh, use, because a full circle is two pi r, that's the circumference. And if you divide by four, because they're like uh, four se uh, sectors, right? So what you do, two pi, 13 divided by four. Two times shift pi times 13 divided by four. So this comes out to be 20 meters and that's proved. Now, in the next question it says, use your answer in B1 and B2 to calculate the average resistive force acting on the carriage. Now, so basically I just want to tell you the main contributor, the main energy was kinetic. So kinetic converted to potential and some of the resistive force, right? So we write uh, work done, work in friction, okay. So to find this uh, work, we need to subtract kinetic energy. I think it was 9.8 or 9.9, .9, probably 9.9. .9. Okay, this minus, uh, what was that? 7.4. 7.4 times 10 raised to 4. Let's do it. 9.9 .9 minus 7.4 is basically 2.5 times 10 raised to 4 joules. Then what you do? Uh, work is force times displacement. So 2.5 times 10 raised to 4. We need force and, now interestingly, we need to find that uh, displacement, right? And what we need to understand is that this is the actual displacement because uh, direction keeps on changing, but uh, that's how it is, right? The force direction also changes along with it. So we're going to use 20. So 2.5 times 10 raised to 4 divided by 20. So it, it, it has to be 12, 15 newtons. Right. I hope you guys understand this. If you still have any questions, please let me know. Then it says, describe the change in direction of linear as it carries, as carriage moves from X to Y. Well, um, because uh, first it was moving horizontally, then it was moving upwards. So we would say the direction uh, and the magnitude changes uh, by 90 degrees. So determine the magnitude of uh, change in momentum. Now this is very important and that's why it's three marks. 
so you guys need to understand mag uh, momentum is a vector quantity so suppose uh, initially momentum was like this and we can find that momentum uh, 580 was the mass and i think 22 was the speed so 580 times 22 so the momentum was 21760 newton second and then uh, at y it was like this and momentum was 580 times 12 so that would be 6960 newton second now because these are vectors right so we have to make uh, head to tail rule uh oh So this is uh, 12, 7, 6, 0, and this is 6, 9, 6, 0. And the resultant must be like this. There's 90 degree between them. So we can use Pythagoras theorem to find them. So the resultant momentum, see, resultant should be equal to 12, 7, 6, 0 whole square plus 6, 9, 6, 0 whole square. And root of this. So you have to use Pythagoras theorem. And 14534.7. So that should be 1.5, 1, 2, 3, 4 times 10 raised to 4. So I think it should be the answer. Please do verify uh side by side if you have the marks so you cannot subtract them no because they're not in the same or opposite direction right yeah. so you have to use vectors okay that's the trick of this question now then comes uh question three for deformation wire define what is stress so stress is just force over area so you can just write or you can write force per unit area that's fine uh, strain is the extension over original length so you can just write it like this okay you can also write ratio of extension or original length that is extremely fine as well now i just want to tell you whenever you have a deformation question right so there's a tip here the tip is always when the graph is given, check two things. Number one, you have to check the uh, labels and units. So when I do that, it's Newton and it's uh, in millimeters. That's a red flag, right? So you have to keep that in mind. And always the second thing you should always do is always check the origin. Sometimes the graph would be like this. There will be like maybe four, this, ten, and then they have given a line. This means that the graph is not fully drawn. It's just a section of the graph. In deformation, the graph must always start from zero and zero. So they have always given the section. So let's suppose they say one of the biggest mistakes in this is that sometimes, you know, uh, they ask you to find area under the graph, which is the energy. So you only find this, but that's not the case because in reality, your area is all of this. So that's one mistake that I just wanted to, you know, tell you uh, be very careful about that now uh, we have the area we have the original length we have extension force fine uh, describe how measurements can be taken to determine accurately the cross-sectional area of the wire now uh, this is also important for paper three question number two and uh, uh, because sometimes you know in the experiment they would give you you have to measure it using a micrometer and then they would, you know, or a digital caliper. So then they would basically um, ask you uh, a problem, right? So you have to give a solution for it. So this is basically a, the same type of question. So first of all, I would say measure the diameter, number one, using a micrometer. Two gauge, two marks, and three. Now, what you do? Take several measurements at 
different cross sections. And then take average. So that is uh, a good point for, this is generally uh, for paper three, those who are giving, this is the point that must be, um, you know, there is a problem and this is the basically solution for it. So you should remember that. All right, now, determine the young modulus E of the material of the wire. Okay. Young's modulus. Okay, so we can find young modulus. Young modulus is force times length over area times extension. I like to write x. Okay, now we go to graph. At zero point eight millimeters, we have four newtons, right? So four newtons times now the length is two point five. So what Nurgis asked me, Nurgis, such question comes like this is in meters, then you have to convert. Okay. And then uh, divided by 9.4 into 10 is to minus it. And uh, extension was, I think, 8, 0 0.8. 0 0.8 times 10 is to minus 3. Okay, let's do this. Always use this function if you have this calculator with natural display. That really makes your life easier. Does it make you like calculation mistakes? Maybe. Okay, 0 0.8 times n raised to power minus three. Oh my God. Okay, let's check what does it say. I hate this calculator. Okay, I have to count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, 11. seven, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, very good. So 1.3 times 10 raised to 11. All right, so that's uh, pretty good. Okay, then. Now it says calculate the increase in energy stored when it is stretched from two to four. Okay. So at two, you're gonna see it's uh, here and at four it is right here. So basically what you do, you find area under the graph here, then you find area under the graph of this hole and then subtract them. So we're going to do this. So first of all, I'm going to use half times uh, force times extension. Uh, one of the reasons why I like to write, uh, you know, um, the formula, even though I know that uh, it is uh, not necessary, but because sometimes, you know, you make a mistake in calculation and your answer gets wrong, but your formula still gives you one mark sometimes, so that's a good thing. So two, and that was, I think, four, or 0 0.4, 0 0.4, okay. 0 0.4 times 10 raised to our minus three, okay. And uh, this would be half times 0 0.4, half times two times 0 0.4 times 10 raised to power minus three. So this is 0 0.0004 joules. And then I could use the other one, which is half times four times 0 0.8 times 10 raised to minus three. So this would be 0 0.0016, and then you subtract them. Three point zero zero one six minus zero point zero 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 four, so zero point zero zero one two. Subtract them. Okay, so one point two times ten raised to power one two three minus three joules should be the answer. Okay. Now, now it says the wire in B is replaced by a new wire of same material. The new wire has twice the length and twice the diameter. Okay, fine. Now this is clever. So because, uh, wait, what? Replaced by new wire, same material. Okay, so they have the same E. The new wire has twice the length and twice the diameter. Okay. Okay. The new wire also obeys hook's law. 
uh, sketch a variation extension. Okay, fine, we can do this. Now, first of all, I would like to tell you, because they, uh, they have the, you know, same uh, force, but extension will be different. So extension is basically FL over AE. Now, um, I just want to, because this is constant, this is constant. I just want to see what happens when there's only length over area. Now you see that 2L means you can multiply two on both sides, you can multiply two then to balance it out, right? Area is uh, proportional to D square actually. So area will be two times diameter means the area will be four times. So I have to write four. If I'm dividing four on this side, I also need to divide four on this side, right? This means that the new extension will be actually, the new extension will be actually half of the previous extension. This means that I have to, at four, it will show half extension. Okay. So it should be somewhere here, right? So because at four, the previous uh, wire was showing 0 0.8, so at four, it sh should show 0 0.4. So now I'm going to start from the origin, and then I'm going to just continue this line like this. So it will be like this, okay? New line. You can also mark it if you like to. That would be cool. All right. If you have any questions, please let me know. Now, uh, the conditions of stationary waves are basically what I've done in my notes are, there should be two waves uh, traveling in opposite direction. So I wrote like four conditions, they have asked, so they have planned two. Two waves traveling in opposite directions. The second condition of same speed Third condition, same frequency. Fourth condition, same wavelength. So these are like uh, uh, this, and there's one additional, you can remember this, they should be same type. So these are the conditions, but uh, he has given two more. So probably he has clamped a couple of these together, but that's fine. All right, uh, now CRO, pretty easy. So they say calculate the frequency. So first of all, I would like to see what is given. So they say this and this, okay. So we can easily find V is equal to F lambda, 330 frequency, 0.18. So that would be 1.8 times 10 raised to power three. Hertz and now moving to the next one. Uh, it says determine the time base setting. Okay, so we know that uh, first of all, I would like to find the time period. So time period is one upon frequency. So I'm going to divide this 1800 with this. So it is 0 0.00055. Five, six. Okay, so this, this is the time period. Okay, now the formula that I've told you is time period is equal to time base times the length uh, of one oscillation, one wavelength, whatever you want to say. Now, um, time period is 0 0.00056. We want to find time base. And the length that is displayed here of one wave, well, that's quite interesting. So you can take this whole length, but that's in the middle. So I don't want to, you know, uh, take it. I can take it like this, and this is one and a half. So total length that they have shown is one and a half. So 1.5 is equivalent to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 1.5 waves are equal to eight centimeters, right? So one wave will be equal into, you can actually cross multiply if you want to. So eight divided by 1.5. So one wave will be about 5.33. So if you try to do it like 
one wave, then it will be very difficult because you don't know exactly where this point is. So that's why I would say don't do it. Okay, so this is in centimeters. Now you put it here, 5.333. You don't really need to worry about the significant figures unless you're writing the answer in the space below. Okay. So right now I got time base to be about 0 0.000105. Okay. And uh, well, uh, it could be written as 1.1 times 10 raised to power 1, 2, 3, 4 minus four uh, seconds per centimeter. So you can write like this. You can also write 1.0 if you want to and not you know, convert it, that's fine. Okay, now uh, going to this question, this is my favorite question. No, wait. Now it says the intensity of sound from loudspeaker is now half, okay. The wavelength sound is unchanged. Assume the amplitude of the trace is proportional to amplitude of the sound wave. Okay, so it is basically proportional to amplitude square, right? Intensity is. If you half it off, like you can basically do, now I told you I1 over I2 equals to A1 over A2, whole square, whole square, right? So you have to uh, use this ratio. So first it was I, now the new wave was I, and if you look at, uh, this is the middle, right? So if you see, it's uh, about one, two, and two centimeter and 2.2, 2.4. So basically the length, amplitude was 2.4 centimeters. So what I'm gonna do, when it was I, uh, the amplitude was 2.4 square, and then the new wavelength was half i. So what is going to be the new amplitude? That's what we're going to find. Now i and i will cancel out. Uh, two will come up. Two times a2 squared equals to 2.4 whole squared. a2 squared equals two. Now, please don't make a mistake here. Always be very, very careful. Okay, so 2.88. And then you can take under root. Uh, that would be basically the new wavelength will be 1.7 almost, right? So what I'm going to do is you have to trace it. So let's do it. 1.7 from here, would, this is one centimeter. So 1 1.2, 1 1.4, 1 1.6, 1.8. So 1.7 will be here. So exactly here, I'm going to mark a point. And then I need to check from below as well. 1, 1 1.2. Four, six, eight. So that has to be seven. Right here. Okay. Seem good. That seems good. Okay. And then I also need to do the same on this side. One, one point two, four, six, eight. So somewhere here. Okay. So I'm trying to be careful. And then, because the wavelength has not changed, you can just uh, trace it nicely. Do not change the wavelength, please. Like this. So it should look like this in your exam. Now. Now it says, uh, liquid drains out at constant rate the wavelength of the sound of speaker is this okay we got the lambda here the sound that is heard first becomes much louder when the liquid surface reaches a so level a is when it is like there's an anti-node form um, so the next is heard first becomes much louder when the surface A. The next then the sound becomes louder is B. So there is an anti-node here as well. This means that from here to here, this is anti-node to anti-node, which is equivalent to half lambda. Now it says calculate the vertical distance. 
Okay. How about that? So lambda they've given zero point one eight. So half of zero point one eight got to be zero point zero nine. Now I will add zero here because uh, of uh, the significance. Okay, so I have to write two significant yes. because my all values are too significant. If there were three minimum were three, I would write three. Now. Label with letter N the position of nodes of stationary wave that is formed in air column and liquid surface at B. So, uh, whoa, okay. So in the first place, the it was formed here, and then it was formed here, right? So I don't know which figure they want us to uh, show. Wait. Four point three. So basically, I'm saying I I labeled them wrong. So basically, antenna forms here. So this is a node. The first node will form here because the water level will reach here, and the next node will form here. So I just need to write it like this. That's fine. Okay. Then, sir, how is that a node? Aren't you hearing a loud sound? Yeah, but you're hearing from here, right? So the first Waves should form like this. So this has to be an anti node. And the node always forms at the closed end. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. then next time it is going to form like it's it's going to go like this, and then it's going to go like this. So there will be an anti node here and a node at the closed end. That's fine. Okay. So remember that. Now the mass of liquid leaving the tube per unit time is this. The uh, tube has an internal cross section. Okay. The density is this. Calculate the time taken. Whoa. Well, we could do this. First of all, I would want to see density is mass over volume, right? So, how much mass basically? is there 0 0.79 equals to mass over well they haven't given us anything like this they're very bad people i don't like them at all this is wrong let me think so in one second this is the amount of mass that it you know that leaves right so the distance we already have here, so we have that distance that the mass is going down with, okay. Well, we don't have the volume, but we can find the volume for sure. Okay, so we can find how much mass is left, right? So first of all, we will find the volume. Volume is area times the length. This is in meters, this is in centimeters. So be very careful here. It is in 13. I will change that into centimeter. So that would be 9.0 centimeters. I think so. You multiply by 100, that's going to come, yes. 13 times 9.0 is 117 centimeter cube. Okay. Then I'm going to use density equals to mass over volume, 0 0.79. Mass is the mass that is drained out. 117, let's try 0 0.79 times 117. So mass is about 92.43 grams. Let me recheck, yes, that's it. Now, if in one second, how much mass is left? 6.7 gram. Then how many seconds, let's call this N, would be required to drain this much mass? So we will cross multiply. So n will be 92.43 divided by 6.7. This should be a three mark question. Why? Why have they given so? So it's, it's around 14 seconds. This should be a three mark question. Really bad examiner here. Okay. Everything is clear? Please let me know uh, any questions you have.
Okay. Now, I truly hate electricity, but let's do this. What, what is uh, pitch of second? So sum of EMFs equals to sum of potential differences, right? Uh, around a closed loop. So that's one mark, that's the second mark. Okay, well, well, I see two batteries connected correctly and there are three resistors and a volt meter. And they say the resistance R is a variable resistor, change until volt meter circuit reads zero. Oh, all right. Very, very interesting. Okay. Let's just calculate the current I in the circuit. Well, hmm. very, very strange, but let's uh, try this, right? Now you see the voltmeter is connected across these two points. And if I see this, across this, we have only this section of the circuit. We don't have this R, so we would ignore this section of the circuit. They both have the same voltage according to what they say, okay? But we have this unknown and current is unknown. That's why I won't want to, I don't want to take this section. Now I'll take this section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Mm. So I say there's a current uh, I okay. and uh, sum of EMFs. So I'm only going to look at uh, this loop, okay? I'm going to look at this loop. Sum of EMFs equals to sum of potential differences. EMF is six volts. Uh, potential difference is I times the resistance, I R by the way I'm using. Plus, there's no potential here, so I'm going to use zero here. Okay. So, what you do then? I take it there. So, 6.0. No. Uh, what I can do is I can just divide 4.0. That's pretty simple. Divide by 4.0. So, it has to be 1.5 amperes. Now, it says resistance R. Now I can take the complete circuit, like I can take this whole loop, outer one, okay? Now, if I do that, so sum of EMF equals to sum of potential differences. So EMF here is six plus six. Why am I adding this? Because the positive is connected to negative, so they are uh, correctly connected, okay? So whenever they're correctly connected, you can always add them together. Then what you do? I times 4.0. Sorry, so current is already 1.5, right? So I'm going to use 1.5 times 4.0. Then the next resistor is 1.5 plus 1.5 times 1.5 plus uh, current is 1.5 and the next resistor is R. So I'm going to just write R here. And now I'm trying to solve this. So this will be 12. 1.5 times 4 is 6, I think. Let me check. Oh, no, 9. 9. Wait. 6 plus 1.5 times 1.5 is 1.75. 2 okay. Bad mental math. And here. Now, 12 minus 6 minus 2.25. 3.75 equals to 1.5 R. And R will be 1.5. Uh, 2.5 ohms should be the answer. Do you have any questions? Let me know. Right. Now, Now in this question, resistors, uh, resistors X and Y are wires made from a same material. This means uh, they have the same resistivity, the diameter. So what I'm gonna do is, 
the very clever people here. Uh, diameter of x, diameter of x is twice the diameter of y, two times the diameter of y. Okay. And they want us to find average drift speed of free electrons, right? So for that, I have to use n k v e, right? So I'm going to make a table. I'm going to use I, N, A, V, E. So I'm going to write wire X, wire Y. Both have the same current. Uh, they have the same uh, electron density because they have the same material. Area. So X is twice, like X has twice the diameter, which means it has four times the area. And Y, Y has just the area. We want to find Vx and Vy. And E is just E. It is 1.6 times 10 raised to minus 19. Don't need to write it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to write the equation. Vx will be equal to I over N A E. Right. And Vy is going to be I over n a e and then I, I i have to divide this okay so v x over v y is what i'm finding so i over n a e this is for x divided by i over n a e so when you uh take the reciprocal right so it is going to be n a e over i don't please don't cancel it yet because we're not ready um so let's keep on putting the values. Uh, I took a lot of space, so I'm gonna use this space. Okay, so 1.5 over n. A is 4a for x, 4a. And then e is e, multiply by n times a times e over 1.5. So this cancel out with this, n cancel out with this. A cancel out with A, E cancel out. So ultimately, I'm just left with one upon four. I don't think so there's anything else. So that has to be the ratio. One upon four, do not write one upon four. This is not allowed. So you have to use fractions. It should be 0.25, but let me still confirm. Yes. Like this. So write decimal, please. Do not write fractions. Fractions are not allowed. Not allowed as answers okay now the resistance r of the variable resistor is now in place state and explain the effect of uh, resistance power transformation by each of the batteries okay so well i could say the voltage remains the same right so I'm going to say power is equal to V square over R. In case resistance of total circuit increases as power is inversely proportional to R, hence power decreases as voltage is constant. Now you might, you know, think, well, you might think power has so many other formulas, right? You say, okay, why ha I haven't used power is equal to I square R? Why not this? And why I chose V square over R? So the simple answer for this is in physics, you can only compare two variables and the thir third variable must be constant, right? Now, if I check this, right, equation, then you should understand that the resistance is decreasing fine, but with that, the current is increasing and then power is also changing. So there are three variables in this. So we cannot use it. Like we can, uh, but you will be you know, stuck because how much current has increased, you don't know. How much resistance decreased, you don't know. So do not use this. When you're using power is equal to V square R, you see this is a variable. And with that, this is also changing, but this is a constant, which means that we can now compare two values easily instead of you know getting into a mess here. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. Okay. Now, 
We could use power is equal to IV, right? If we use power is equal to IV, yes, we can use it. We could say then that resistance is uh, decreasing, which means current increases, which means power, power uh, increases. Oh, sorry. Total resistance, oh, sorry, my bad. Resistance increases, current decreases, which means power decreases. Yes, we could do that. Right. So then you have to add another point that current decreases as well. Okay, is it clear? So you could always, you know, uh, think like that. Now question number six. A sample of uh, beta radiation, beta minus, okay, this is minus, right? State the change in any number of neutrons in the nucleus of sample that you mix. Of course, of course, of course, of course. So in beta negative, right? A neutron changes to a proton and then it gives negative plus an anti-electron neutrino. So it has to be like one neutron decreases. Yes. Now, the number of beta particles passing a fixed point in beam is two minutes is this. Calculate the current. Okay. So, first of all, I want to find the charge. So, the charge is that there are like number of particles. This, these are the number of particles and charge in one electron is this. Beta particle is just an electron, by the way, if you don't know. That's one of the properties. They might also ask you what is a beta particle. Minus so, all right, let me see if it, it, it is nice to me. Yes, it is this time. 1.568 uh, times 10 raised to minus eight. Excuse me, hello. Teaching. What's up? What's up? Uh. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Oh my God. Hello. Okay. 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 So now we have the total chart. Current is charged upon time. 1.568 times 10 is to minus eight and time is two. So you have to change this two times 60 because it's in minutes, right? So luckily we have this value already. So we are going to divide by two and we are going to divide by 60. So that is 1.30 times 10 raised to power minus 10 ampere. Let me check the details. Yes, it is. 1.3 times 10 raised to minus 10 ampere. Oh, we have to give it in pico. See, tricked me there. So my calculator did not trick me. He was like, so generous. So 130, <laughs> 131 actually, pico ampere. Finally did something nice today. Okay, so you can write 130 as well, it's fine. Now, suggest so why uh, beta particles are emitted in range of kinetic energy. So I've already written that in notes. You can check like the particle physics at the end. So you have to write that other particles that are also emitted share the energy with uh, beta minus, like that, okay? And that's it, cool. So you guys have any questions, please let me know.